Hello, this is Karthi Karur and I'll be your instructor for innovation and problem solving. Given that you're on this video, you must be interested in problem solving as a generic discipline and wanting to become a generic or a general problem solver. So your pro this course is going to benefit you if you're looking to be an inventor or innovator designing or analyzing products, services, systems, organizations, or even corporate or government policy as some other students uh, in this course have done before. You might be looking to reduce overhead in a large organization, or maybe you're facing problems, technological or policy or whatever, that have been resisting solution for months or even years. The other thing that might interest you is you want to perform work that will not be commoditized, automated, or replaced by machines or uh, artificial intelligence. Now, there are lots of different methods that say they teach you creativity or uh, you have systematic design thinking, design for Six Sigma and so on. But what is the evidence for success of this material out here? So you can check out my research profile to see my work in a very great variety of disciplines, not just all the branches of engineering, but also in uh, the social sciences and humanities and associated areas. Students who took this course the last time around were able to produce general quality work in a range of subjects in their course project in just one semester. And many of these things, many of these results were published in TreeScon 2018, which was hosted at Purdue. And Purdue is going to host TreeScon 2019 also, which means if you take this course, you'll have a free pass into the conference, which will be held somewhere in May of next year. If you look at the range of what the students did in class previously, you have some standard stuff like residential waste heat recovery to predicting the values of financial assets. This was actually predicting Bitcoin. Another one in business model innovation, efficient education in foreign languages, something agricultural, weed detection and remediation, to something totally out of the world, science fiction, constructing Dyson spheres around our sun. And one student won the Burton Morgan Prize with the startup funds at Purdue with the work that he did in this class. So now we have examples that the work succeeded. The question is, why exactly did it succeed? Is there some rationale for it? The reason for it is we have precise and accessible problem formulation as actually chains of functions which are uh, accessible at first cut even at the high school level. So you or your team could easily build all of these things together very quickly. And once you have that function chain, the problem formulation, you're able to do rapid development of system modeling, simulation, analysis, and optimization based on the ac very accessible problem formulation. And uh, we give you software and templates and the like for that. The problem formulation enables use of heuristics from a great variety of disciplines. Usually, you're only able to use heuristics from a single discipline. But here we have the best practices in a variety of disciplines integrated in a trees-like framework. And it's openly available at the website here, open source trees, and it's designed for mobile phone use. The other thing, you're going to get help from me on video conferencing in all the steps of your project, problem formulation, analysis, modeling, simulation, coding, or optimization if you're stuck. So you don't remain stuck for too long, and you learn how to get around all of those kinds of uh, difficulties very quickly. So there is always this question, you know, I've done a lot of things. This is just some of my engineering work. My filters are there on all of the cell phones that you have around you because uh, I developed the pilot filtering at the front end at the antenna that's there in all the CDMA cell phones. And, and uh, my vehicle health monitoring for aircraft auxiliary power units and Small jet engines is there on most of the ones that are flying around the world right now. And you can see the others. And uh, if you see my research profile that is linked before, you'll also see work on 
economics and policy and uh, education and the like. You might wonder you know, whether all of you can do this sort of work because uh, the list of the resume of work sort of seems intimidating. Because one thing that I like to remind everybody about is that as human beings, we all have a computer that's got about the same power, 20 watts. We've got about the same input and output bandwidth based on our senses and how fast we can, how many flops per second we can do and uh, how much we can hold in our working memory and things of that sort. So when you model the human being as a computer, you know, we're all about very close to each other and we all have about the same number of neurons, 100 billion. So the thing that really differentiates one person from another in solving problems is how many misconceptions have you got? So that is one of the things that I focus on in the course to take out misconceptions so that we are just focusing on the problem at hand and not adding any metaphysical or extraneous beliefs into what we are doing and therefore impeding ourselves. So if you see the outline of problem solving steps, they are entirely empirical. So you first find out what's the job and who are the people who want to get the job done and we write that quantitatively and based on that we build the chain of uh, cause and effect with all of the dynamics involved. And then, of course, if the system is already set up, you don't have to identify physical phenomena or objects or all of that stuff. But if you're synthesizing something, then you can do that. And it is not just physical, but you can also have psychological or economic regularities that you can use in designing your systems. And at the bottom, you see some of the methods by which problems can be solved, meaning large dimensional problems are reduced to low dimensional problems very quickly. Most of the time with the methods that we teach in this class, and as a result, you get very interesting solutions. And then finally, you have to know how to design your experiments and test everything thoroughly so that you have a very good concept design by the time you finish your course. Thank you very much.